Hi and welcome back to this final video demonstration on Perl. Um, in this video, what we're actually going to do is write a script together. And we're going to write a very simple system monitorer that, uh, lets, uh, that asks the user to input the name of a service and then it will check if that service is listening on TCP and if it isn't listening it's going to exit with some nice error message uh, if it is listening on TCP it's going to return the process ID of the service and the local address and port number that the service service is listening to um, and we're going to do this uh, step by step so what we have to do first is looking at what we're going to achieve uh, and the first and just take it step by step so what we're going to do first is prompt the user for a service, which is going to be a name. So what we do is, uh, what we want to do is ask the user to input a, a service name from keyboard. So what we do then is to have it nice. We just do a print statement, and then we have, uh, then we do a question here or a statement. Input port number, and then we add with and with backslash n to have a new line and a semicolon to uh, to end, end the line and then we're going to ha create a variable um, my uh, dollar service where we're going to store the service and arrows it, it equals arrows pointing each way which denotes that we want input from keyboard and since when we take input from keyboard we get it with a uh, we get it with a new line at the end, so we're going to take that off with jump. So jump dollar service. So this is a good time to check that what we've done so far in these these three lines works. So what we're going to do is print, and we're just printing dollar service. Service. Uh, now I want to test run the script. Something I do all the time is testing, because I really want to test every single step uh, to see that what I di did was right. Now I said input port port number, which is wrong, but let's go SSH. And you see that it output SSH, and all I have to change is my print statement to port name. And it shouldn't be port, it should be service a lot of errors at once, but now we can test run the script again, and you see that it says input service name, I go SSH, and then I get SSH back, which is what I asked for. So, now we have the service that we're going to analyze within our script, it's in the service variable. The next thing we need is to have a list of, uh, of, of services that are listening on TCP. And how do we get that from Linux? Well, the simplest way is with netstat, uh, dash a n t p uh, which is what is it now uh, include protocol tcp um, all of them yeah so if i go next that a n t p i get this output so i get the so i get a list of all services that are listening i get the local port number and the local address that it's listening to and I get the process ID number right here. So that's basically all I need. So then, I, what I need the script to do is collect all of this data into a variable, right? So I'll do that with just creating a variable. My, let's call it, let's just call it netstat equals, and then I can do system netstat dash a n t p. So what I'm trying to do here is to do the netstat antp command and collect the output into a variable named netstat. So we're going to do that and we're going to print netstat to see that it works and then run the script again. I have to input something and then you can see that it works. Um, so, uh, now we basically have all the data that we need within the script. The next thing we have to do is start looking into, uh, looking to see if what we're looking for or what we have is within, within the script. So, a very simple way to do this would just have a controller right here. So, we 
we'll have a controller to see if the service that we inputted is present within netstat. Uh, the easiest way to do that is basically to have an if, and then we're going to use a regular expression to match and see if our service is within the netstat output. So if dollar netstat equals tilde to have a regular expression forward dash service so basically what I'm trying to do here is to see if what I typed into service is present within netstat somewhere and then I'm going to execute some code and else I'm just going to print um, service not active. And that's going to be it. So this is the first check that we have. So let's just see that it works. If we look at the output here, we have SHD here. So we can use that as our tester. So, okay, let's do a print here as well. If. So if I run this and input SHD, we should get in the if, and if I input something totally bogus, we should get service not active. So let's try to run the script. SHD. And now I did something wrong. <laughs> okay, so this is part of it. Did I forget to save or what? Okay, now it's working seriously weird because I'm not going to, I'm not getting to I don't I don't even get to input anything. SHD, service not active, that's wrong but it's printing this. Okay, so this is one of the ch times when you may want to see if what you should do is change to use backticks instead of uh, instead of system. So let's try that and I'm going to uh, tell you about the difference a little bit later. So now you see that I imp input service name shd in the if. Also going to add a print statement again to see that it really does print, uh, or it really gets the output. Yep, now you see here, input service name, shd, then we get in the if, and then it prints the output. So what happened before, when I had system instead of the backticks up here, is that it ran the command, but it just ran the command in the prompt, and then what it saved to the variable was actually the, ex the error code. So I'm going to see up here if I can show you, no, nothing saved if I'm correct. So this was the the output here was actually from running the code. Uh, it wasn't from collecting the the netstat output into the netstat variable. It just ran the system command when I use system. Now that I'm using the backticks it is running netstat and collecting the output into netstat which is what we want. So you see uh, general troubleshooting and trying a lot is good. And you also saw that this command seems to work, so I'm just going to test run the script again with some totally bogus input that isn't present anywhere in uh, in netstat, and you should see that now we should get service not active, and we do. Um, so that is first sort of the first control because there is actually two things that we want to listen to, um, because if you look here, what we want is to see if the service is listening on TCP and if not exit with a message and we should actually have another check to see that it actually says listen at the very end here so there are two ways we can do that either and I actually want to do it that way uh, we go and add uh, listen to this statement but I actually want to show you another way to uh, to do the to do this but this is sort of a, a a very quick way. 
the next thing we need to do is look at everything service for service so that we get the service that we want right so what we're going to do is just forget about this for a little while and we're going to have a for each loop we're going to try to loop because you see here in the output from netstat that every line <laughs> is its own service right every line is its own service here so what we should do is loop loop all of those lines uh, and we just we're just going to try to do that so for each okay we know from the beginning that it's not going to work because we have one single loop here what we have to do is we have to create a var an array from this netstat and the way we do that is with a function called split so we do uh, an array my dollar services or whatever equals split and split is basically a function that takes uh, that takes a variable or a set of text and split it on something that we decide uh, and when it's splitting it it's going to put it can split it multiple times and put the uh, the output into an array uh, so what we want to achieve here is that we want to split on every new line because we want every new line to be as its own part of the array right so my, my array equals split and then we're going to have a pattern which is our new line right and then we're going to have the data that we want to split up which is netstat and then end it and you can see that it's expressed as a regular expression right and end and then we can try this we're going for each uh, services yes you're getting the uncut version with errors and all and we're going to print dollar underscore just to see that it works you remember that when we manage to loop services then the uh, the line the uh, the index in the array that we're currently working on will be present in dollar underscore so now we're trying to run that and we did something very wrong apparently oh yes yeah, so so wrong the split is wrong okay so the syntax for split is split opening parenthesis the regular expression that we want to match comma the data set where we want uh, that we want to work with so trying it again input service name SSH and um, and I'm not really sure if this proves anything but you can see that a lot of things are being printed here at least so that's a good thing okay so let's add something here print line is and running it again whatever okay let's add a new line here as well this is getting really ugly this output and now you can see that if I clear it and run it again you can see that the first line I have is line is active da 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 something and then we have line is proto and all of these things and then we actually have nice little lines with the data that we want right so next thing we want to do is that we actually don't really want those lines so we're going to remove them uh, and we know now that whenever we do this the first two lines will be of no interest to us uh, and there is actually a way to remove indexes from an array um, with there are different functions called push pop shift and unshift and if I remember correctly uh, it is 
uh, unshift that we want to do to add some uh, remove something from the beginning of an array um, and so and there is also pop which means that we uh, remove something from the end of an array so if we just go uh, unshift I'm not typing unshift services semicolon now what we want to achieve is that this first line here should be removed okay no we're not am I am I mixing things up yes I am okay so shift is what we want to use so shift to remove the first element of an array. Unshift would be add an array, at, uh, add an element at the beginning of the array. And now you see that here we only have this line before we had this line. So we're going to shift it once again. So we're just copying that. And trying to run it again. And now what we have is just the nice lines that we want. Okay, so now what we want to do here is that we, we're going to work with this data line by line. Line by line equals socket by socket, and what we're doing here is actually working with sockets. So, uh, the easy thing is to say that we're going to look for, um, we're going to see if the socket that we're working on is a listening TCP socket matching our service, right? So what we want to do is if what we're looking at now dollar underscore and then we do a regular expression not like that if that equals our service then we're going to do stuff, right? So we do that, we go print, do stuff to see that it works, and else we're going to do nothing, right? Do nothing. So I'm removing these old if statements for the time being because we don't need them. Actually, I don't think we're going to use them. They were just there for some testing purpose. Um, so now if I run this script and I input a service that is present, I'm going to get do stuff. If I input a service that is not present, I'm going to get do nothing. And the nice thing about using a regular expression here is that we actually don't have to type things exactly as they stand. So if we look at the output here, we can see that the SSH daemon is called SSHD, but maybe I don't really know that, so I'm just typing SSH and it's going to work. Um, same with RPC, I don't have to type RPC bind, it will be enough with RPC, uh, and so on and so forth. So let's try this. Perl sysmon, input SSH, uh, I get, okay, this was a little bit weird, but I get do nothing, do nothing, do stuff, do nothing, do nothing, and so on and so forth. And that is, of course, because first, the for each loop will iterate this, doesn't contain SSH, so do nothing, then it's going to go here, do nothing, then it's going to go here, do stuff. Um, and now I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So we, we know that the else statement here works so we can just uh, remove the code because we don't want to do anything uh, and now we're in to do stuff so now we singled out the service that we want to work with so the, the question is what do we want well what we want is actually the uh, first of all we want the uh, process ID and then we want the local address and port number so how do we do this well there are two different ways. 
one way you can go is that you just look here and you identify that every line begins with something followed by white space followed by something followed by white space. So we should actually be able to uh, split on white space and then single out what we, what we want. So let's try that. So what we're going to do then is that in our if statement we do uh, a new variable uh, or a new array, uh, my array because I'm not up for finding out good things. My array equals split. Uh, and then we're going to split on white space. So go back to our Rubelar uh, editor and see what is white space. Uh, backslash small s. So let's try to split on backslash small s. And then what we're going to split is dollar underscore. And then what we can do is actually that we can just print um, and print the elements that we expect here. So print and then we start with pid, which should be dollar array. And let's count here in the output. So the elements, if we're correct, should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven and the index number for seven is six. So we go pid array. 6 and then we go let's just say socket and then it should be array uh, 1 2 3 4 so that's 3 uh, get back to me a little script and then a new line and that's what we should do we can remove this print do stuff and let's see if it's there Ooh, I did something wrong. Yep, it has to be my array. Common mistake. Uh, I did something wrong again. What was that? My array equals split, da da da, print pid array. It thinks that there is an extra. Okay, let's just do it like this. Sometimes things get weird, so let's express uh, let's express the print like this. With concatenation. Try again. Okay, I'm not really with you here. We have the we have the if. See how this goes away. See this is black and this should also be black. Was it when I removed this one? See that this was this was in the wrong way, so that that's just the kind of small errors that you usually see. Um, now we can see that something is clearly not working. See here, we get into we type sh, we get into the loop. We have pid, we have socket, we have pid, we have socket, but we have nothing being printed. Um. One way to go can be to always go zero and see what's the f first elements in the array that we created. And you can see here that the first element is TCP, and then the second element is nothing, because that was what I did. I printed the first and the second element. And I think that this is because, looking at the output, I think that this is not one instance of white space, it's more ins more more white space. So what we want to do is to add an operator in here that says th that's that's going to be a plus that's saying one or more occasions of white space. And then the split should work fine because then it would now I think it's splitting here, then it's splitting here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then, here, then we get a whole bunch of elements in our array.
but what we want to do is split on that, then split on that, and so on and so forth. So let's try this. What we did was that we added a plus so that it says one or more white space instances. So let's try that. SSH, and now we're printing first, we're printing TCP, which is the first element of the array, and then we're printing zero, which is the second. So now we have to do what uh, have to resort to what we did for uh, last time. So let's calculate the elements again zero, one, two, three, four, five, six for the PID, and then zero, one, two, three for the address and port number. and run it again, SSH, and now you see that we get PID and we get the socket, which is actually everything that we wanted. Um, one last thing that we want to do here is to add a new line, to print a new line, to make it a little bit more pretty. And now you see that it works terrific. So, one last thing that we actually didn't manage to fix is that if we input something that is not present, then we're going to exit with a message. So that means that we should actually have some kind of control variable here. Because now, if we do input something weird, what's going to happen is nothing, but we wanted an error message. So, and we cannot input it here in the else statement, because that else statement is going to uh, go going to be applied for every service that is not uh, our condition, but it, we want to make sure that if nothing matches this, if nothing matches our service, then we're going to have an error message. So we're going to achieve that with a control variable. So I'm setting a, doing a control variable here that I'm going to set to true, uh, and just this is just text, so just text true, and then I'm going to do an if statement down down here, I'm reusing this old one. So if then I go then I just go if dollar control equals and true. Uh, remember that we had the lecture on operators here. I'm actually most of the time just using regular expressions or regular operations to match text because that's easiest. So if control equals true service not present and we don't need an else statement because this is just some text that we're going to output when that happens so now see here if I do oh, again I forgot my so if I run the script again and just do bogus input we're going to have service is not present the problem now is that if I run it and I'm going to do RPC then I still get services not present. So we have to finally add to where we're doing stuff, which is here. You remember for each services, we're going through the service array that we created. We go if dollar underscore, what we're currently working on, is uh, contains the service, then we're going to do stuff to get out the information that we want. Within this selection, I'm also going to set control to false. So we're going to set control to false maybe a number of times, but what's important is that if this ever holds true, so if we ever have a service that is match matching, if we ever found a service on this computer that is matching our statement, then we're going to do stuff to that service, and then the control variable is false, because then we want to don't want to type services not present. So, as a final touch, I'm going to show you that it worked. Uh, Perl sysmon, SSH, and then you see no service is not present. So, I'm not sure if you got anything from this, but this was just my way of showing how I work when I work with uh, when I work with script programming. And I guess what I want to what I want to show you is uh, to divide your task into smaller tasks and constant testing. Constant testing, that's the key. Because you don't want to write a whole bunch of lines of code and then get an error message because you don't want to know where the error is. So continuous testing and that will make you troubleshoot so much more efficient. So that's it for this video demonstration on Perl. It's quite run and cut, but I hope that we managed to help you learn something. Thanks for me 